So anybody could be a mystic. Do you think though that technology is a good thing? You start becoming your own enemy in your own head. If there was one advice for the youth today, what would it be? So I just love to know like how you define joy. You are an Indian author, a yogi, a mystic, and a visionary. Can you describe what a mystic is for people who may not know? See, there are only two kinds of people in the world, mystics and mistakes. <laughs> wow. Those who have made a mistake with their perception, they are mistakes. So much suffering happens because of that. If you perceive everything right, people will call you a mystic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody could be a mystic. Of course. Wow. I love if it that. Is. Do you think though that technology is a good thing or a bad thing? Technology is neither. The beautiful thing about technology is if you learn to use it, it works for you. But who you are will decide how you use it, isn't it? But how do you So do what what we need to fix right now in the world is who are we? This is what we need to fix. We've all become many things which we are not. Essentially, we are born as life on this planet. Rest of the things are taught to us, isn't it? Stop teaching all this stuff which makes us something other than human beings. Right now, do you want to keep your mind, your thought process, pleasant or nasty? Tell me, what is your choice? Ideally pleasant. Just tell me, pleasant or nasty? You're thinking about it, this is… No, I'm trying to think, should I fox you and say nasty <laughs> <laughs> Say it <laughs> Okay, nasty <laughs> I'm going to bless you now <laughs> No, no, no <laughs> Okay, I take back my words <laughs> Okay <laughs> Any so, human being's choice <laughs> for themselves is definitely pleasantness, yes. isn't it? body, mind, emotion, everything and surroundings, you want it pleasant. Yes. So why is it not pleasant? Surroundings are not pleasant because of many things. Yes. If your thought and emotion are not pleasant, it's entirely you, isn't it? It's like this. Uh, on a certain day, a lady went to sleep. A lady went to sleep. In her sleep, she had a dream. In her dream, she saw a hunk of a man standing in that corner and then he started coming closer and closer and closer. He came so close she could even feel his breath. She trembled, not in fear. <laughs> and then she asked, what will you do to me? The man said, well, lady, it's your dream <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm saying, what's happening in your mind is your bloody dream. Now the problem with life is that not that life is not happening the way you want it, even your dream is not happening the way you want it, that's a problem. <laughs> I'm saying at least fix this, at least let the dream happen the way you want it. I did this campaign called hashtag I pledge to be me, which was against body shaming. And I got so many emails but this one email stuck with me, it was by this nine-year-old girl who wrote to me saying she's suicidal because um, she's fat and uh, dark and her family uh, used to tell her that you're never going to get married, nobody's ever going to marry a fat and dark child like you. So I feel like, you know, this whole thing where you start becoming your own enemy in your own head, I think that has been starting pretty young for a lot of people. The level of exposure today is such that what happened to you at fourteen is happening at nine. Yeah. It's like preponed everything. It is, yes. So what happened probably in my generation at eighteen happened to you at fourteen. What happened to you at fourteen is happening at ten or nine now. So this rush to live… Grow up. To live. Okay. Essentially to live early, mm. you know. Everybody wants to live, they think it's a race. Yeah. If life is a race, you must win. If you must win, you must get to the finish line quick. Yes, yeah. 
That means what? You must be buried first ahead of others. <laughs> if you win the race, you're finished, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Life is not a race. It is a certain phenomena. How profoundly can we experience this phenomena? Is all there is. It's not something that you have to do. It is happening. Life is happening, isn't it? Yes. How profoundly will you experience is all there is in your hands. Before coming to today's engagement, my thirteen-year-old daughter was asking me, you know, could I… could I ask a question? I'm like, sure. <laughs> so, this is from her picking okay. up on… on this whole male-female um, that she is influenced by, um, given society and, and the narrative that has been played. and. She said, I am curious to know, if there was one advice for the youth today, what would it be? See, gender is a personal thing. I I'm sorry, I'm putting it in a very basic way. Please. <laughs> what is in somebody's pants is not my business or your business. It is… it is only relevant in a few places like bathrooms and bedrooms and somewhere. In rest of the places, your gender is irrelevant. It's a question of your competence, what you can do, what you cannot do, what you're capable of, what you're not capable of. We need to bring the world to this place that what kind of body you have is not my business. Only in bodily relationships, it matters. In rest of the time, it's not my business. So I just love to know like how you define joy. Well, uh, if you could define it, uh, it would not be worth pursuing it. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> because uh, see, we're calling it by different names. Essentially, it is life, if it's exuberant, in its exuberance, uh, it may be joy, it may be blissfulness, it may be ecstasy. Well, if it's relatable, it may become love. These are all different manifestations of exuberance of life. Joy is not a philosophy that you take on. Like right now, it's become in pursuit of happiness. Where are you chasing it? And why is it elusive? <laughs> because you think it's somewhere else. It's just that this life, when it functions in an exuberant manner, not in a depressed way, in an exuberant manner, that means if you open the cork, it is exuberant. If you close it and keep it, then it becomes depressed. In this mass of life that exists on this planet, for all of them clearly drawn out lines by nature, you can do this, you cannot do this. For you, lines are not fixed, so human beings are not suffering their bondages, they're suffering their freedom because they don't know how to deal with it. Let's unpack that. <laughs> it's the freedom that they're suffering? It's the suffering? freedom that they're suffering. What do you mean? Why do you think everybody's trying to bind themselves to somebody? Because they cannot be free, if they're free, they feel terrified. Why? Somebody has to hold their hand all the time. See, I cannot live without you. Or I Thank cannot. You. <laughs> you taking that? <laughs> Whether I say I cannot live without you or I cannot walk without a crutch, what is the difference? I'm asking. See, Perception? right now we we made it very romantic. And yeah. nice. If I say I cannot live without you, that's supposed to be the best thing. No, I can live perfectly without you. Right. But by choice, I'm having you here. Right. Isn't this a great thing? Right. Absolutely. In many ways, a woman is like the flower of human species. A root is most important, but if a root doesn't flower, it'll feel frustrated. The fulfillment of life will not happen. If feminine has to find a place, the right place in the world, we need to create a balanced society where the finer aspects of life are as important as survival. If in our education systems, music, art, 
aesthetics become as important as science, mathematics and technology, only then feminine will find expression in a society. This must come into our education system, this must come into our social milieu. So, uh, in only making this happen, empowerment of the feminine can happen.